Hello, my name is Philipp Bauer. I work in the Division for Internationalization at Uppsala University in Sweden. I would like to present to you today an example for an international virtual classroom, which we developed in the Listo project. And in particular, I would like to talk about the co-creation methods that we used. Listo is the Latin American and European Corporation on Innovation and Entrepreneurship. It's an Erasmus Plus capacity building project running from 2017 until 2020. We had three focus areas, university industry collaboration, entrepreneurial universities and entrepreneurship education, where we built a virtual course. And this one I'm going to talk about today. These are our partners with 10 universities, three from Europe, Sweden, Netherlands, Spain, three from Brazil, two from Uruguay and two from Argentina. This is what we built together, the Listo IVC Entrepreneurial Solutions in Innovative Global Networks. It is a international virtual course with 30 hours, 14 of which are synchronous and 16 asynchronous, meaning outside a video conference. It's a combination of local session, meaning students meeting in a classroom where they then connect with their international peers and they also do collaborative online group work outside of this local classroom. We built student project teams and each of those teams had an international mentor. In total, we had 20 teachers or mentors involved and 100 students, about 10 from each partner university. The specific learning goals were working in international multidisciplinary teams, understanding international networks and ecosystems, using tools like design thinking or business model canvas, develop a prototype or an idea for a relevant business or social problem, and above all, address the sustainable development goals. This is how we did it. We progressed in six steps. First of all, we started by mapping our interests and sharing our knowledge. How do we teach entrepreneurship our, our universities? And this was a necessary first step to create some common ground and understanding among the 10 partner universities. One of the methods we used was a simple poster presentation. Then we went on to some teacher training. All our teachers were absolute experts in entrepreneurship, but not necessarily in virtual or online teaching. So for that, we got some training to really connect the course content with the right virtual methods. The next step was a joint curriculum development. We built on established methods in entrepreneurship education, such as design thinking, business canvas, but as a group, we figured out how do we put this together in a new virtual course format. Step four was to plan for evaluation. This was also very important. For instance, we planned an evaluation for the course at the half time to see how the course went for the students. And we also developed a teacher diary for the teachers to fill in in the course of the teaching process. This is also very good to collect data and you can publish your experience later. Plan step five, uh, finally, was testing the, the course. We did three pilots, which were all a bit different, had a different focus, different methods, different contents, but we all tested them at the same time and based on the development that we did together before. In a last step, step six, we came back together as a group of teachers, evaluated the experience that we had together, reflected about what we've learned as a team, and then we went on to turn the three pilots into one course that was shortened overall, but sort of based on the best practice experience of the three pilots. Now I'm going to present to you the six lessons learned and recommendations from our collaboration. First of all, it's important to find a good balance between structure and openness. On the one hand, when you work with 10 universities in different time zones, you need a lot of planning and structure. At the same time, you would like to allow for a lot of openness, so creativity, growth, and learning by doing can flourish. Lesson number two is that for this kind of endeavor, working with an international team, you need a dynamic and shared leadership. This means maybe moving from a project management perspective more to a teacher group perspective, and it means distributing the tasks and responsibilities very clearly in your group of teachers. Lesson number three is that it's very important to build trust and confidence. Our teachers had met in person, so they had moments of bonding, sharing dinner together, all the things that we need as human beings. Our students never met in person. They only met virtually and online. 
And for that, you also need to plan for activities at the beginning of the course that help our students to build trust and confidence so they're ready to open up and take this step into the unknown, into an area that they haven't been to working in a language that is not necessarily their mother tongue. Lesson number three, very important, technology is not pedagogy. We are, have so much technology in our hand and we're closer than ever with all the tools that connect us. But at the same time, they also can limit us and they can lock us really in, in what is possible within those platforms. So it's important that we figure out how to use this technology and use it as a bridge to really connect each other. That means that maybe a Zoom meeting like this one that we have grown uh, accustomed to is maybe not the only or best method for having a classroom exchange. It might be asynchronous outside the classroom. Lesson number five is a very human uh, experience. We need to test and fail to really learn about what we're doing here. Uh, it is important that we don't aim for perfection in the beginning, but be open that things can go wrong. And we also know that they will go wrong. For instance, in one of the pilots, we had a power outage, so we couldn't continue with the plans. So the students just switched back to their cell phones and we continued the class via this. So this is the kind of flexibility that you will learn how to use in a virtual classroom. And lesson number six is simplify, keep things simple. Like many other things in life, less is sometimes more. In this case, it means that you shouldn't cram too much course content into your course when it comes to entrepreneurship, but you need to leave a lot of space uh, for the interaction, for the collaboration itself, because this is probably one of the biggest learning outcomes that your students will take away from such an experience. If you would like to know more, we published a handbook, the Entrepreneurial Virtual Classroom Handbook. This is written by all the teachers who developed the course. The book is available in English, Spanish and Portuguese, and you can find it in the resource section of the Listo project homepage. If you would like to know more, we're happy to hear from you. Let's stay in touch. This is our website. You see my email and my Twitter account, and we also have an Instagram account for the project and a hashtag. Thanks for watching and listening, and I hope to hear from you. Bye-bye.